In this section, we're going to dive into the configuration changes necessary to really control our bundles in a production scenario. We'll get into optimizing bundles for size and for time to first byte, exporting separate files from our main JS, and loading them asynchronously, parsing and loading markdown, setting up production environments on Heroku, code splitting front end and back end code, caching HTTP2, CDNs, and other futuristic asset considerations. So for this section, we're going to start from a particular branch in our repo that kind of skips over the choose your own adventure section. So to start from the same place, let's git clone this GitHub repo, cd into webpack course, then we're going to git checkout Heroku. Finally, let's npm install. So this is Heroku. If you haven't signed up already, getting an account is pretty easy. You fill out all this information, it's the same as basically everywhere else. I already have an account, so I'm going to log in. So when you log in, you're presented with the dashboard. These are all of my projects. Each one of them is a Git repo that Heroku hosts. Every time you push to Git, Heroku will bundle and deploy your code to the Amazon Web Services cloud. Heroku also has something called the command line interface. It's accessible at this URL. Download the Heroku CLI for your particular operating system. Then in the terminal and run Heroku login. Enter your credentials that you set up when creating the account. All right, so inside of our project, we're going to create a new file that Heroku uses to know what to run when it's time to run in production. We're going to say touch proc file. Now let's open that up in our code editor. Now this is the same code we know from before. We're using index.ejs instead of index.html. And that comes from the Choose Your Own Adventure section on hooking up HTML templating languages. So in order to get it running in Heroku, we're going to need to add a new script to our package JSON. Here in scripts, let's add one called prod. And we're going to run source server main.js. So now let's create a new app in Heroku, Heroku Create. You can see that it gives us a URL. If we double click, bring it up in our browser. It starts the app for us, even though there's no code running. Let's say you wanted to add a config variable. Config set node env equals production. Now with Heroku config, it will list out your environment variables. The environment variables are useful for setting secret tokens and keys that you wouldn't want to keep in your code base. All right, now in our server, we have to make a change to our Express.js. Down here where it says port, 8080 is not the port that Heroku will use. Heroku is going to assign a port dynamically. So the environment variables are on process.env, and port will be set by Heroku dynamically. Or if it doesn't exist, as in development, we'll use 8080. All right, so in production, Heroku is going to use static files, and they're going to be in the disk directory. If there are no files in your disk directory, we can create them now with npm run build. That's the same as this, which we'll call webpack and use the dev config for now. All right, we see that it's output all the files we need, and they exist in dist. Now we can actually run Heroku locally without using the production servers at all. So let's run Heroku local to spin it up in production mode. Now it says no env file found. So what we do is we create one that's a hidden file called .env. Now inside .env, we just set up our node environment like we did with the Heroku config. Now we run Heroku local. .env is a Node.js package. It simulates actual environment variables by loading them beforehand. So in our case, Node.env is going to equal production. So inside of our proc file, we're going to want to tell Heroku how to run our web server. So we do that by saying web and then giving it the name of a script. So in our case, the name of our script is in package JSON, and that's prod. So it'll be npm run prod. All right, let's get it started. We can see that our server is started. It says server listening. Now that's not the greatest output. So let's control C to start to stop the server. 
and express, let's give it more information. It's listening on localhost, and then it's given a port. All right. Server listening on localhost 5000. So if we command double click this, we'll see that we're running just like a normal web server. Now this is a good thing to do to test out your Heroku build before you push it to production. Now before you push to Heroku, there is one more problem, and you can see it right here in the console. Even in production, it's attempting to load the Webpack Hop Module Reloader. Now that's not going to work. This is a production build, and it's not going to have Hop Module Reloading in it. So what to do? There's a couple of things we can comment out before we get into the real solution in the next episode. Let's comment out Babel Runtime Regenerator and the line underneath it for the Webpack Hop Middleware. We'll also want to go to our Webpack Config and comment out this plugin. So now when we run npm run build, we'll create a much smaller bundle. Now let's run Heroku local. And back in our browser, when we reload, it's no longer pulling in that JavaScript, so we don't have that error. All right, cool. So now we're ready to push to production. If we get status, we see that we have a few modified files that we'll need to commit before we can push them to production. So we'll get commit with the A flag and the M flag. And in the message, we'll say, ready for production. All right, so get status. We still have a couple files hanging out. So let's add those now. We'll add the env and the proc file. So git commit, env and proc file. All right, so now the get status should be totally clean. Now Heroku's got one more weird piece of syntax. When we get push, we're going to push to Heroku, which is our, which is the origin that holds our web server. Next, we're going to want to push a branch. In our case, we're going to push the Heroku branch, since that's the branch we're on right now. But Heroku only wants to run master branches. So on origin, we're going to call this Heroku branch master. And you use the colon to do that. So once again, we're git pushing to the Heroku origin. We're on Heroku branch, but we want to call it master once it gets there. Now you can see it's doing its git work, and then once it's done, the remote immediately starts compressing the source files and building out the source. It detects a Node.js app, and it creates a runtime environment. It sets a number of environment variables, it installs the Node binaries, it downloads Node and all of the packages, it caches those for later uploads. Once the build is succeeded, it looks in the proc file and finds the web, right here, and then it runs it compresses the slug down, and it launches it to this URL. After verifying the deploy, it's ready for you. So let's go to this URL once more. Sleepy Everglades and a number is my URL. Yours is going to be different. And there you have it. We've successfully deployed to Heroku the production version of our app. Now you can see when you reload that it kind of loads unstyled, and then it brings in everything else. That's because it's loading the HTML right here. It's then loading an image. Finally, it's loading main bundle JS, which has all the CSS and JavaScript bundled together. Now we've got a couple of challenges for the next couple of episodes. First, we want to break out CSS from its JavaScript so it can load it in parallel and have less of this flash of unstyled content. Second, we want to use a new config file for production so we don't have to comment out these things every time we want to push to production. Right now, our main JS and our Webpack config have comments in them. It's a bit hacky, but we'll work on it more in this section. Right now, it's enough that we're up and running on Heroku. And at every point in this section, if you want to get push to Heroku, please do so. You're going to replace Heroku as a branch with whatever the branch name is. But you're always going to use master for the remote branch. OK, so in this episode, we successfully set up a Heroku account, installed the Heroku CLI, set up environment variables for production, and finally pushed our app to the Heroku remote using git. Next, we're going to work on the production JS side to make sure that we have a production config for Webpack. See you there.